Hallelujah. Let's pray. God, I thank you. I thank you for your precious Holy Spirit that leads into all truth. I thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes away our sins. I thank you for giving us new life. I thank you that our life is hidden in Christ. I thank you that we don't have to get bogged down by the earthlies. I thank you that we can be seated in the heavenlies. So come Holy Spirit, have your way. Do whatever you wanna do. Say whatever you wanna say. you Jesus
pour our love out on you, Jesus. We pour our love out on you, Jesus. We pour our love out on you, Jesus. It's what you deserve. We pour our love out on you, Jesus. We pour our love out on you,
Up in the love. Take us up in the love. Take us up in the love. 
fixed on something you created when you told us to keep our eyes steadfast and fixed on you. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us, Lord. Even tonight, teach us to fix our eyes on you. Because, Lord, we need you. us to focus, Lord. Teach us to fix our eyes, actually fix our eyes on you. Forgive us for all the things that actually steals our eyes. Forgive us for all the things, God, that we actually fix our eyes and our hearts and our attentions to. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for all the things that you have provided to me that have stolen my eyes. Forgive me, Lord. You are so faithful, God. Thank you for loving us, Lord. While we were yet sinners, thank you. Thank you. Father, we need you. Touch our hearts and change our lives tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want you to say it one more time. You are holy. You 
are worthy, you are soon coming. You are holy, you are worthy, you are soon coming. You are holy, you are worthy, you are soon coming. Glory, hallelujah. Open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 1. the hallelujah in the Hebrew is a it's a praise it's praise the Lord and so when you're singing those words hallelujah you are soon coming you're literally saying praise the Lord you're coming that's an expectation that's not a hallelujah I can't wait till you hopefully potentially maybe someday come that's praise the Lord you're coming teach us to be prepared y'all be in prayer for Camila's dog she got out and so some folks are running around looking for her right now the Lord is good he made dogs too in Jesus name and so as the end draws near thank you Austin as the end draws near sometimes we, we focus more on the things that we shouldn't do than what we should do how many have found that true in your life? That, you, that it's easier to focus on all the things that you shouldn't do and you totally forget the things that you should do. Okay, I'm not gonna drink. Okay, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna watch that. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that. But what about the things that you are gonna watch? What about the things you are gonna say? What about the things you are gonna do? I love, and I don't remember where it is. I read, I read about 10 chapters today. But I want to get somewhere, and when we get there, we'll know we're there. Do you know what I mean? Okay. First John, I'm going to read out of the ESV. So if you don't have uh, that Bible, then use your ears or your phone. <clears throat> that which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The NLT says, we proclaim to you the one created from the beginning whom we have heard and seen. The life, verse two, was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, fellowship, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things, why? So that our joy may be complete. Say our. our. You know what that means? Us. Ours. Nosotros would be we. This would be nuestro? Our? Let's see. Ours? Plural. I did, uh, I wrote a whole bunch of scripture today, all in Spanish. And then I wrote the English above it, which is really awkward. So, because sometimes it's backwards. But anyways, we digress. Verse five. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Say practice. practice. Anybody like practice? Of course you did. I knew, I knew there was going to be about three people in here. Well, most people don't like practice. Most people prefer the games. Some people hate practice, but they love the games. I actually liked practice. So I knew there would be a couple. If Zaina was in here, I'm sure Zaina would have raised her hand too. 
but we must learn to enjoy the practice because the practice is what's going to make you prepared for the game. Have you ever gone to a meeting unprepared? Yeah, everybody. Most people. Most people go to meetings and they're just going to wing it. Here we go. You know why I'm not nervous to go into a meeting? Is because I'm never winging that mess. I know what I'm going to say, when I'm going to say it, because I know what it's about and I'm going straight for it. Buckle up, here it comes. In the same way, because I have practiced, and I want to talk, I'm not talking about in the natural, I'm talking about the supernatural. When you practice knowing the word of God, when you need the word of God, it's available. So the Bible says that when they drag you into court, not to what? Don't worry about what? What you're going to say. Why? Right. It is not a gift of the spirit to be ignorant. So I think so often we read that scripture and we think, well, man, he's just going to pull stuff out of everywhere. Can he do that? Yes, he's God. Does he usually do that? No. Why? Because the Holy Ghost usually falls on what? The word of God. And if the word is not a foundational part of your life, where is the Holy Ghost going to fall? To the ground. Not always. That's how I've heard some of you guys speak before. And I'm not talking about in a microphone. I'm talking to other people. And you talk and suddenly a scripture comes out. And it's probably not a scripture that you spent like five years memorizing. It's probably something you just read that day. But it's coming out like it was the only thing you've ever studied in your whole life. And it's flowing with fire. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is speaking through you. I think it's so funny. Sometimes when people are like, wow, what an anointing. I'm like, what? What do you mean? They're like, well, just like what Cheyenne said or what you said, like really hit my, we can't hit your heart. If I punched you, you'd feel that. <laughs> but if we're just speaking and you felt something in your heart, that's the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you felt something cut you, that's the Holy Ghost. I remember the day Austin said, you know, having you as a pastor and a former football player, like I'm just sometimes just terrified when you come up and pray for me. Say <laughs> so either way, something's going to happen. It's going to be slightly aggressive. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Now, isn't that interesting? It doesn't even say with him first. So if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Say all sin. all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I love that. Anybody memorize that in Awana? I did. Oh, if y'all didn't know what Awana was, you're not Baptist. Okay. But y'all, we might have an Awana program one day. All right. Grace and Jamie can run it. Oh, y'all would be, all the grown-ups would join with your vests. If y'all really don't know what it is, you need to look up Awana vests. It's like the most 1980s thing ever. My mom's probably still, still has mine. I'll bring mine. Okay, Grace, bring yours. I'll bring mine. Here we go. Verse 8. If we confess our sins, say if. Why is that a big deal? We have a choice. It's all going to be exposed on that day. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, this is important for somebody who's super religious, who thinks they're losing their faith at all times. Every day when you're like, you had a bad thought, I'm going to hell. I don't know if any of you are in the room anymore, but we used to have a lot of you. Have mercy. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation. He is the sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this, we know that we have come to know him if we keep 
his commandments. Now, remember, we talk about it all the time. That word know in the Greek is an intimacy that is not just knowing about him. That is knowing him. I don't just know about Cheyenne. I know Cheyenne. Whoever says I know him but does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word and in him truly the love of God is perfected. That's important. Verse four, whoever says I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Now, in the last days, scoffers will come. False prophets will come. And the Bible actually says some are already here. What are those false prophets saying? Things that tickle your ears. And what would tickle your ears? Here's, here's, a, here's a modern day word that is from a false prophet. Yes, love yourself is one of those. Yes, you don't need to love yourself. You already do. A, a major word that is going around the church today is that Christ finished everything on the cross. Therefore, no matter what you do, it is already done. Hypergrace. And I would say most Christians have fallen into hypergrace where they feel like they can do anything they want to do and God loves them just so much that he's just going to overlook it like a little kid who, you know, I know you're not supposed to have two cookies, but like, you're cute, right? Like I do stuff with Havi and, and Everly and Maddie and Addie and all the little, the little babies that love me because they all don't love me. But the ones that really love me, I just let them get away with stuff. Why? Because I can. Havi's not supposed to have a phone. Guess whose phone Havi has all the time? Mine. <laughs> Why? Because I can do that. Yeah. I'm like, her, I'm like a grandpa. I'm fine with that. But see, God doesn't just look, us, look at our sin and I'm like, oh, wow, look at, look at Kev. Just cute. I mean, I know he's sinning, but like, he doesn't do that because sin is so against him. And so I think one of the modern day false prophecies that's been given out is that God just loves you exactly how you are. He does not just love you exactly how you are. He loves you so much, he didn't want you to stay how you are. And he's pulling on you. Hallelujah. By this, we may know that we are in him. Verse six, whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. So here's, what I, here's how I take notes in my Bible. Teach me how to walk the way you walked, Lord. So when I read that, I'm not just like, okay, we're supposed to walk like he. I don't want to just know that we're supposed to walk the way he walked. I want him to tell me specifically, show me, guide me, lead me, push me, pull me, how you walked. Amen? Beloved, I am writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. At the same time, it is a new commandment that I am writing to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. I don't want to get into that tonight, but somebody remind me, because that word hate is not what we think. I think based on some of the study, that word hate is a lot less than what we think hate actually is. Sometimes we just don't like people, and I think it's really on the border of it's, it's really closer to hate than it is to just like, hmm. Verse 10. Whoever loves his brother, chapter 2, verse 10. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. If you want a note for reference, jot down Matthew 15 and 14. It is the blind leading the blind. And here's what the Lord spoke to me. This is why we must have discernment. It is our job to see that somebody is blind, not somebody who's blind to tell us they're blind. Please hear me. There are churches right now that have blind leaders that are walking towards the edge of a cliff and people have no clue that they're blind. They are just blindly following the blind. It is not as a, as a discerning person 
in the body of Christ. It is your job to discern somebody who's blind. All you've got to do is look. Most people don't look. Most people don't want to look. I'm always looking. I look too much. All right. All right, try it again. <laughs> no, I want, I want to know, are you walking towards, if you're walking towards that cliff, there better be an airplane there. And if I don't see a plane, I'm not going. Verse 12, I am writing to you little children because your sins are forgiven in his namesake. I am writing to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you young men because you have overcome the evil one. Say that's past tense. I write to you children because you know the father. I write to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men because you are strong. And the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. All right, here's your homework for this week. We're going to write 12 through 14. Of chapter 2. Write it in English, Spanish, French. Some Portuguese, 12 through 14. I want you to write it out. I want you to write it five times, the whole thing. But don't just write it. Write it in your heart. Write it in your heart. I'm trying to teach my boys how to not just do school, but like focus on what you're doing. When you're writing scripture, focus on the scripture. Don't just write it. Some of y'all get caught writing because you, really, you write really neat. I've seen some of y'all, and I know when you've zoned out. I've watched you in the coffee shop, and like you really like your handwriting. You don't even know what you wrote. Five times. No, no, no. You can write it 14 times. Everybody else can write it five. Verse 15. Do not love the world nor the things in the world. Do you know what that means? It's talking about the devotion to the world. Because John 3.16 says what? So God so loved the world. So then I've heard people be like, don't love the world or the things in it, but God loves the world. It's not talking about the, we should love all people. Amen. Amen. Enemies and neighbors. But the, what they're talking about is don't love the devotion to the world. Don't love the things of the world that are trying to kill you. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. Basically think about what that word devotion, anyone that's devoted to the world, the love of the father is not in him. Are you devoted to God or are you devoted to the things of God? See, we think sometimes even the things of God can be worldly. They can be carnal. If you're focused on a blessing rather than the blesser, that's devotion to things. That's what, it's honestly what Romans talks about. Romans talks about they worship the created rather than the creator. Amen. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. That is why we say, don't follow your emotions. Shine would kill that song. We'd be here for 30 minutes. All right. Verse 17, and the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Now, I love that they chose the word abide rather than lives forever. They abide forever. If you abide, you're in. Verse 18, children, it is the last hour. Yes, Lord, it is. And as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. Now, we have not had a crazy amount of people that have come to our church and left. But there have been some that have come, and I am so thankful they have left. Why? Because if they are not with us, and I don't mean with us, this church. I mean with Christ. If they are not in the body of Christ, we don't want people just hanging around. And the problem with the church is they've wanted people just to hang around because they feel better about themselves. But we're supposed to love the world. Yeah, love the world. Don't let the world, love of the world get in you. And for, for a lot of people, there are people I know that are in the world today. There, I mean, matter of fact, think about missionaries. Missionaries are in the world. 
Now, we're all called to be missionaries to a degree. But there are missionaries literally living in the world, but the world's not living in them. For most of us, if we were to go live in the world, the world would run us over, and then it'd back right over us, and then it'd drive straight forward right over us again. And we would be so probably not aware that we just got run over that we just stay right there in the middle of the street. There's a reason that, that the church is supposed to be the church. It's an equipping station, right? So some of you have been equipped. So there are some people that need to go ahead and get out, get a little bit, get out and do something with your life. And then there are some of y'all that need to sit for a minute and just, okay, okay, this is what life is like. I can breathe. Okay. <laughs> Breathing is good. I didn't breathe most of my life, but this is nice. I think this is better than the other way. But then some of y'all, once you learn to breathe here, you realize you can breathe anywhere. Thank you, Lord. But they went out that it might become plain that they are all not of us. Verse 20. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. I write to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar? but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ or the Messiah. This is the Antichrist who denies the Father and Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you have heard from the beginning abide in you. Say from the beginning. It's not talking about your first service. It's talking about when he first just arrested you with his love. Yeah, I went to church when I was, I was born, actually. I was born in a church. He's not talking about your first church service, you know. He's not talking about your first VBS. He's talking about the first time when God became real to you. <gasps> You've all talked to people that are like, yeah, I grew up in the church. As they're saying that, you're like, oh, they don't know. I, don't know. I used to say that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I was, uh, I was pretty much born in the church. Shine was like, uh, not the true church, you know. <laughs> if, you, if what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father, verse 25. And this is the promise that he made to us. I love it. Dash, eternal life. <laughs> That's the promise that I will say amen. Verse 26. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. But the anointing that you receive from him abides in you. And you have no need that anyone should teach you. What anointing are they talking about? The Holy Ghost. Isn't that awesome? That's not just like a gift that somebody happens to have. But the anointing that you received from him, that, that wasn't a gift that, that one person got that nobody else got. That, like, if you could have just got that anointing, then he would abide in you. And you, you have no need of anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him so that when he appears we may have confidence and not shrink back from him in shame at his coming. Now, isn't it beautiful? One of the first scriptures we read talked about practice. This says, now little children abide in him. That means we have to do something. We have to abide in him. Say practice. Practice. So that when he appears, we may have confidence. and not shrink back from him in shame at his coming. Some of y'all need to practice the fact that you've been saved. Some of you need to practice the fact that you've been delivered. Some of y'all need to practice the fact that you've been set free. Matter of fact, I told you that in different words. Some of y'all need to really practice. And you don't practice when everything's going great all the time. Sometimes you need to practice when you feel a little bit down. Wow. Oh, man. That's when you need to practice. Wait a minute. I'm still saved. 
I'm still delivered. I can still be free. Okay, right now I feel down. I don't want to do what I'm about to do, but I'm going to live like I'm already free and I'm going to walk. I'm going to practice like I'm already free. What if y'all practiced? Apply the word. I, I just wonder when we think we're actually going to try these things out. Like the reason in sports you play games is to see if what you practice makes you good. Yeah. Otherwise, they didn't need a game. You just practice. <laughs> I just keep tripping over the same thing. When are you going to practice stepping over that thing? No, I'm serious. But you can't practice stepping over something that's not there. See, when everything's good, you don't practice. If you're on a straightaway and there's nothing in the middle of the road, you're not going to climb over something that's not there. Okay, let's just pretend there's a mountain in my way. Let's... No, you just look ridiculous is what you look. But when a mountain shows up, that's when you say, okay, Lord, all right, you put this here. You are good. I am not going to trip over it and then blame you and then blame me for blaming you and then, and then go into a three-week funk and then have to have a meeting and then after the meeting, I'm going to cry and then I'll feel great. As long as they play, he set me free. Practice. Okay, we'll just move on. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. We, we, we may come back to it. We'll see. Verse 29. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. See, Alan Iverson got it wrong. Anybody know who Alan Iverson is? Alan Iverson was a basketball player. And he was a great basketball player. Yeah, that, and he hated practice. So what he did, would do is he'd, he'd buy a whole bunch of stuff from Taco Bell and eat it before practice. And then when they had to practice, he said, Coach, I got to use the bathroom. And when he got confronted about it, he said, come on, man, we're talking about practice. We're talking about pra not a game. We're talking about practice. And like it, it went viral before like viral was a thing. And now to this day, it's still a meme. You can look it up. Just look up Allen Iverson practice. It's hilarious. But see, he had it wrong because although he was a great basketball player, I wonder what really would have happened to him had he actually put the work in. And I think, I wonder how many Christians actually could walk in righteousness act if they actually put some work in. You know what I'm saying? I wonder how many people would know him so well had they actually put the work into their relationship. In the same way, I wonder how many marriages would be, would be good if you would put the work into your spouse. See, even at church, I think sometimes we just go through the motions. We show up to a building, Shine sings eight songs. We laugh, we'll cry. There's an ending, but not really. And then you'll just stay up too late and then you'll go home. And then we'll all message about our favorite parts of service. And that's awesome. But are you practicing while you're here? Because if you're just here, then when you get out there, you're going to be, it's not going to do you any good. I think it's the reason that, that, that most people die when they go into the world. It's because they've never practiced the thing that they say they believe. Now, they practice for their job. They practice, you know, getting ready. They practice all their stuff. They practice their hair. Girls practice all their stuff. Guys, not so much, but the girls do, I know. Shine's always trying stuff. What do you think about this? I'm like, are you going to the prom tonight? Like, where, or what is, no, 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 just, just never know. Do you like my nails now? I'm like, where are we going? She's like, just, just now. One time, Shine was like, do you like this shade of lip gloss? I was like, what is, that? what is it? I didn't know they had different shades. I didn't understand it. I, I don't get it. I love my wife. She can buy any lip, lip gloss she wants. I just don't get it. I don't really care. Wear it, don't wear it. I don't care. But do we practice falling in love with Christ? Do we practice going to him and falling on our face in faith? Or do we just wait for like him to do it? Anyways, I'm going to move on. All right. 
chapter 3, see what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. I love it, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is the, it, uh, the reason that the world does not know us is that it did not know him. See, we take that personally when really God should be the only one taking it personally. They didn't recognize Christ and he didn't take that personally. Beloved, we are God's children. Now and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. Because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him puri purifies himself as he is pure. So one of our jobs is to purify ourselves. How do you do that? Wash yourself with the word. But see, you can't just read the word. You could, read, you could read a shampoo bottle, but if you don't apply it to your hair, your hair is going to be as nasty as it was when you read that bottle, right? <laughs> nasty. <laughs> Who heard uh, Honesty the other night, Sunday night? She said, Pastor Kevin, I want McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, but I also heard her that night say somebody else's hair is nasty. That's what made me think about it. Who? I said, Dang. Yeah. Y'all better make sure you wash your hair around, honestly. She will let you know. I love that little girl. We were talking yesterday, like, that attitude is cute at 7, but at 13, I don't know about that. It's cute now. No, it is. It's amazing right now. Verse 4. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practice law, practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Now this, okay, this is where I wanted to get to. Celine, I told you when I saw it, I was going to get there. I was going to know where I was. This was what I was trying to get to. I just didn't know where it was, but I'm there. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Now, if you were here Sunday, that word destroyed means what? Tearing down completely. Done. The NLT says what? Uh, anyone who continues to sin proves they're children of the devil. Is that the scripture there? No, that's the one below it. So it says no one. Let's see, where was I? Uh, whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil yeah for the devil has been sinning from the beginning the reason the son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil so no one born of God makes a practice of sinning for God's seed abides in him and he cannot keep sinning because he has been born of God now for, for some new believers you understand a seed has to sprout has to grow right so there is going to be a period where, where life, you're going to sin and you're going to trip and you're going to fall on your face a thousand times. Get up, repent, and keep walking. Where most new believers get stuck is they land on their face and then they're so disappointed in themselves that they just stay on the ground. And the devil puts his foot on your throat and then you're just down for the count, blaming God and yourself. Thank you, Jesus. So I wrote, the reason Je so it says, the reason Jesus came was to destroy the works of the devil. May we never feel we have the freedom to indulge in what God came to destroy. May, may nobody that says they follow Christ feel freedom to indulge in the thing, the very thing that he came to destroy.
there, th this is a huge debate in the church now these days is that you can do anything you want to do because God just loves you. If you're doing the thing he came to destroy, I promise you that is not going to be just a little, that's not going to give you a high five and a little pass. Amen? Whew, thank you, Jesus. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep sinning because he has been born of God. Verse 10. By this, it is evident who are the children of God and who are children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness, righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. Let's read that again. Verse 10. By this it is evident. Say evident. evident. What does that mean to you? Clear. Apparent. Give another word that everybody knows. Clear. 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 Another word. That's actually, that's probably better. But another one. Obvious. How do I know? You know. But how do I know if they're of the... You know. Just look. Just open your eyes and look. Are they blind or can they see? It's not complicated. By this, it is evident who are the children of God and who are children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. Verse 11. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? I love that. It didn't, it didn't say because he even brought a better sacrifice. It says because his own, deed, his own deeds were evil. And his brother's righteous. It was evident. Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. So I don't want to go into this deep, but, but Hillsong had a pastor, and I don't even remember his name. Carl Lentz. And, and, and if you knew anything about Carl Lentz, it was like one of the fastest growing churches in the world. And then he was on Oprah, and she asked him some pretty specific questions about the kingdom of God. And all you had to do was listen to his answers, and it was evident whether he could see or whether he was blind. It was so I watched three minutes. I watched a three-minute clip, and I was like, I can't watch this anymore. A, that's a mockery of the kingdom of God. I wasn't against him. I didn't hate him. I certainly wasn't going to follow him. And what happened, like, how many years later? I mean, it was, what, 10 years later? I mean, he fell off a cliff, literally, and just people just followed him, just like... Because if you're blind, you better see that they're blind. Amen? It's not his job to tell you, hey, by the way, I'm blind. I might lead you off the edge of a cliff, so just <laughs> hold on. <laughs> no blind person's going to warn you they can't see. Because most blind people think that they can see. Amen? Verse 14. We know that we have passed out. Uh, we have passed out of death into life because... We love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. Ooh. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. Now, for those of you who are super, super compassionate, and you're like, so should I always give all of my money to every single person that I see that has less money than me? You better follow the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. I found that out the hard way. I was in New York City in college, and I was fairly broke, and there were a lot of homeless people in New York City. And I gave everything I had away because they all looked like they were really in need. And then I read an, ar an article one day that they were making $60,000 a year on average hustling people on the subway. 
Now, are there some people... <laughs> 60,000 doesn't go very far in New York City. Now, are there some people that were actually in need? Yes. How could I always tell? I couldn't. I had to follow the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 19. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. Say reassure. For whenever our heart condemns us. Oh, this is so good. Oh my goodness, this is so good. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart. And he knows everything. All right, additional homework. You add that verse in. Okay? Verse 19. Yeah, read it. There's a sure way for us to know that we belong to the truth. Even though our inner thoughts may condemn us with storms of guilt and constant reminders of our failures, we can know in our hearts that in his presence, God himself is greater than any accusation. Is that the Amplified? Ooh, by this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our hearts before him. For whenever our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart. And he knows everything. Say, God, God. thank you for being greater than my heart. Forgive me for following my heart. And teach me to follow you. Now, I give this advice a lot to people. I give this advice a lot to people. I say, if you would just do the opposite of what your emotions are telling you to do, you would walk in freedom. So I give it again. And here's, here's the look. I know I told you like the first time I met with you. Here's the response I get from some people. Yeah, but, but I might have some emotions that are real. They're all real. They're just not true. Real and true are very different. Wow. Come on. When a kid falls off his bike and I initially scream, you're fine. I'm not saying it didn't hurt. I'm just letting him know he's fine. It might hurt, but he's fine. Amen? Verse 21, beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. Whew. And what does the world say? Follow your heart. Another false yeah. Just follow your heart. Your inner self will know. Your inner self doesn't even know you. It certainly doesn't know the way to go. <clears throat> and whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. Teach us to please you, Lord. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. Because the spirit leads us into, thank you, Jesus. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and is now in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. Say so that's past tense. So how do you practice living in the, in the kingdom? Here's how you practice abiding in the kingdom. Is that you've already overcome. Say, I, say I've already overcome. Now say it again. I've already overcome. 
Say it with a little bit of stank behind it. Say it like honesty would say it. Yeah, see, she got one thing right for sure. Confidence. I've already overcome. See, that's how you defeat sin in your life. I've already overcome. I've already overcome. I've already, even when you're tripping, I've already overcome. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now, what word did we see over the first three chapters over and over and over? I'm writing to you. <laughs> Practice, yes. What's another word? Abide. abide. So if you don't understand the word abide, the he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world might not mean anything to you because then it's just a thing that you say. I remember when I was at the deepest, darkest sin in my life, somebody was like, that's all good. He who's in you is greater than he is in the world. But not if that wasn't realized to be true in my life. Because what it looked like in my life that he was in the world was way greater than he that's supposed to be in me. Because I didn't know how to abide. Verse five, they are from the world, therefore they speak from the world. And the world listens to them. Please don't listen to the world. We are from God. Where. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. You know, there are some people that you want so desperately to hear the truth, but they cannot hear it. And do you know that God is the one that calls, draws, and brings them to himself? Stop banging your head against a wall over and over and over, hoping that if you just said it differently, they would get it. See, because that's how churches and pastors and evangelists, they, they, they become, um, people call them communicators. Oh, wow, they're just a great communicator. You do not have to be a great communicator to preach the gospel. What verse are we on? Oh, yeah, seven. Beloved, let us, one ano- let us love one another. For love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his perfect love, and his love is perfected in us. There's a, a reel that's resurfaced that was 87 weeks old. And it was a it was a it was a Instagram reel of people testifying about what they got free from. And somebody testified about, I think, homosexuality. I didn't watch the whole thing through. I just read through the comments. Shine was like, who is responding as eyes on Jesus? I saw that was me. I was firing them. <laughs> I was firing out. Hi, Shiloh. <laughs> and here's the main response, because we've had quite a few people get delivered from a spirit of homosexuality. We didn't deliver them. The Lord did. And they testified about it. We're not just like telling everybody, right, okay. There are so many trigger words now in society. Yeah. There are so many trigger words in society. And so as soon as somebody declared that the Lord set them free from homosexuality, the internet is just like, and here's the common thread. God is love. That's right. The common thread is God loves everybody. Now, is that true from a 20,000 foot perspective? Yes. God does love everybody. Is that what they are talking about? And see, I love arguing. So sometimes some of those, I love to just jump in the middle of it because, but not everybody wants the truth. Now, not my opinion, the truth, right? I have no idea why I ran down that track. Here we go. I was running for a reason. Maybe I'll remember it. Verse 12, 13. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify 
that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So that we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. By this is by this is love perfected with us so that we we may have confidence for the day of judgment because as he is so also are we in this world i love this there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear for fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not been perfected in love We love because he loved us first. If anyone says, I love God, and he hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has not, or whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness. I thank you, God, that we are going to practice walking with you, practice keeping our eyes on you. We are going to practice, Father, laying down our life. We are going to practice walking in righteousness. Forgive us for practicing everything else. Lord, I thank you that you are such a good God in the same way that if we ask you for bread, that you're not going to give us a rock. Father, in the same way, you are going to teach us how to walk in truth. You are going to teach us how to keep our eyes on you. I thank you, Father, that if we actually look to you, we will find you. Forgive us for for acting like following you is so complicated and so hard, when really it's so wonderful and so easy. Father, we do pray that Camila finds her dog. Pray that your spirit would just lead her right to to that dog right now. Lord, I pray for all those who are still sick, that are struggling with sickness. I pray, Father, for all the families that are still dealing with whatever is going around. But I pray that instead of them being frustrated, maybe because they've been sick so long, that they would actually celebrate the fact that you're with them. And so, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for this church. I thank you, God, for for all the people that you have allowed us to be family with. What a gift. And, Lord, we don't take it for granted. But we honor you. Father, I pray that tomorrow as we have an opportunity to share the gospel with somebody, that we would have our eyes open, that we would have our ears open, that we would be following you in the eager expectation of what you're going to do. I pray that we start living like we're looking up, living like you're about to come through those clouds, that we would live in such eager anticipation of of what you're going to do because you are God. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Thank you for the kids. Thank you for the Feed the 5,000. Thank you that that you are providing uh, plenty, more than enough. Thank you for all those who, who need to be grabbed by you. Lord, we know that the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Let, let, us, let, let us be a church where, where we have more workers than we need. May there be more people than we ever could fathom that are, that are willing to lay down their comfortable lives and come and serve those who live in, in circumstances we couldn't fathom. And so, Lord, we love you. And we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Does anybody need prayer before we go? You want some prayer? What do you want prayer for? (laughs) You look good for 70. All right, Joe. Darius, why don't you go lay hands and we'll all pray. Everybody just extend your hand. What's your name? Carlos. Nice to meet you, Carlos. I'm Kevin. That's Joe and Darius. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. All right. We do too. His son's probably at home right now. His son is supposed to be here. So James. Oh, they are here. So everybody's looking for the dog except us. Okay, good. 
Father, I thank you for Carlos. I thank you, Father, for his life. I thank you, God, that that you're the one that created life. You created Carlos. You created his body. And we know that even as we grow old in years, that you are still here. And so, Father, I pray for, for, for parts of his body that can be fixed, that can be touched, that I pray, Father, that, that muscles and ligaments and tendons and, and things that might be out of whack, I pray for a supernatural Holy Ghost touch on his body right now. And I pray, Father, that you would absolutely touch his body right now, right where he is, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for healing. I thank you that you are a God of healing. And so we ask that you would heal his body. But more than his body gets healed, I pray, Father, that every wound in his heart would be released. I pray, Father, that you would touch his mind. I pray, Lord, as your word says, that the latter years would be greater than the former. And I pray, Father, that we know that it is still raining. And so I pray that Carlos prepares his field, that he prepares his heart and he prepares his mind because we know that it is raining. And I pray the fire of God in his life. I pray a joy, unspeakable peace that passes all understanding. And I pray, Father, that you would be so close to him right now that he would have eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And may you bring him peace. Thank you for bringing him close. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say thank you, Lord, for touching Carlos right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So your homework is what? First John, chapter 2, 12 through 14, and what? 3, 19 and 20, right? <coughs> Depending on your translation, it's 19 and 20, right? Thank you, Jesus. Well, maybe we should all go look for the dog, or what should we be doing? I'm not your father. Don't ask me. Thank you, Lord. Well... Hallelujah. Adios. Hasta, hasta mañana. Hasta Vienna. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow night. Oh, yeah. There's a rest party. And I imagine it'll be here. What time? Six. I imagine it'll be here because I think there's like an 80% chance of rain tomorrow. So, yeah. I'm not coming. But uh, Elijah's got something tomorrow. Football. Something. Hallelujah. See you all Friday. Would you say?